Yes, I just texted Mark to see if somebody could move these tables now. Your microphone's on. Mine is. Nope. I don't. I don't have one. So. Huh. There's a microphone in here somewhere. There's a microphone. Let me go down and check. Huh. Oh, Mike. Yeah. It sounds like the Zoom one is on. Maybe the. If you're uh, if one of you guys here is your mic on. Oh, Jane, Jane, is yours? Is, your mic's not on? I don't know. We're not muting. It's your volume. Mute is what you. Oh, you have to turn your volume on. Oh, I uh, just wanted to, I don't know if I'm going to be by myself. So if you could just be patient with me and like switch me over right away, because I'll be.
Okay. Gee. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the March 28th meeting of the Santa Clara Unified School District Board of Trustees. Good evening to my fellow trustees, staff, um, Dr. Waddell. Um, I am running the meeting tonight. Trustee Fairchild is unable to be in person tonight, so I'm running the meeting. So I'll call it to order at 5.04 p.m. And we will do roll call. Trustee Rotterman? Here. Trustee Gonzalez? Here. Trustee Canova? Here. Trustee Muirhead? Student Trustee um, Valdez? Here. And Trustee Ryan? Here. And I am Trustee Lieberman, and I am here. May we please have the... Uh, you got to read something. Oh, yeah, forgot. Um, Trustee Fairchild will be attending the board meeting via teleconference pursuant to section 54953F2A. It is not necessary that she identify her teleconference location. Okay, um, may we have the intro introduction of the interpreter, please? Good evening, board. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Veronica Adams y seré su intérprete en español de esta noche. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la mesa directiva. Esta reunión está siendo transmitida por el canal en español de Zoom. Para escuchar esta sesión en español, oprime el botón que dice interpretación en la parte inferior de su pantalla y seleccione el idioma de español. En este menú también puede seleccionar la opción de silenciar el audio original en inglés. Thank you. Okay, and then um, I was just told that Trustee Fairchild is on the Zoom. So can you hear us, Trustee Fairchild? Is she there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, she's there. Okay. Um, Trustee Rotterman, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Yeah. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Okay. Um, the mission of Santa Clara Unified School District is to provide equitable, emerging, and innovative educational experiences so that each student thrives in a global society. Um, graduates of Santa Clara University, Santa Clara Unified School District are resilient, future-ready, lifelong learners who think critically, solve problems collaboratively, and are prepared to thrive in a global society. Can I please have um, a motion to accept the agenda? So moved, Rotterman. All right. Um, um, as Trustee Fairchild is online, we will do a roll call vote tonight. Um, Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I say yes. So that, uh, Trustee Fairchild? Maybe she could give a thumbs up and a reaction or something. <laughs> we can't get her voice. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. There it is. OK. OK. Um, so that passes, 7 to 0. OK, um, guidelines for public comment. Um, the public must follow the board policy 1310.1 on civility, which states the following. The policy promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly conduct among district employees, parents, and the public. This policy is not intended to deprive any person of his or her right to freedom of expression, but only to maintain, to the extent possible and reasonable, a safe, harassment-free workplace for our students and staff. 
In the interest of presenting district employees as positive role models to the children of this district, as well as the community, Santa Clara Unified School District encourages positive communication and discourages volatile, hostile, or aggressive actions. The district seeks public cooperation with this endeavor. Okay, now um, I'll see if there's any public comment on closed session. I see um, Ms. Waisaki. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to provide some information to the board before you go into closed session. Last Friday, the ratification voting window closed on approving the tentative agreements that UTSC reached with the district. Of our 1,025 members, 697 cast their votes, representing 68% of our membership. We're pleased to share that of those who voted, 98% approved the TAs. I just wanted you to have that information before you go into closed session. Thanks very much. Thank you. Are there any other comments online for before we go to closed session? No, okay. Madam President, uh, actually, Madam VP, I'm not sure if there's somebody from the public that might want to speak on this. Um, is it? Yeah, there was somebody. Is there someone in the lobby? Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, the board will now go into closed session. Um, in closed session, um, the board will um, consider B1, consideration of the waiver of administrative hearing regarding student 032824A.1. B2, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, one case student versus Santa Clara Unified School District, uh, Office of Administrative Hearings, case number 202402-0296. B3, public employee discipline dismissal release. B4, conference with labor negotiators, um, representatives Gary Waddell, Jose Gonzalez, and Mark Scheel. Employee organizations, UTSC, CSEA, AFT, unrepresented employees and management. And B5, conference with real property negotiators, property Santa Clara High School, agency negotiator Gary Waddell and Mark Scheel, negotiating party Santa Clara First Baptist Church. We expect to be in closed session for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm.
session. Um, we go my read out here. Um, in closed session, item B1, the Board of Trustees discussed the recommendation of staff and related evidence regarding expulsion with a suspension of enforcement of student 032824A.1. And item B2, a majority of the board in closed session voted seven to zero to approve a compromise agreement in Office of Administrative Hearings case number 2024-020296 to resolve educational claims raised against the district in exchange for funding not to exceed $132,500 for placement, compensatory education, reimbursement of parents' private educational services and related attorney's fees incurred in this matter. The motion was made by board member Gonzalez and seconded by board member Canova. The roll call vote passed by a vote of seven to zero with trustees Canova, Fairchild, Gonzalez, Lieberman, Muirhead, Ratterman, and Ryan all voting yes. Under item B3, the board received information. Under item B4, the board received information. And under item B5, the board received information and gave direction. Okay. Um, may we have the introduction of the interpreter, please? Good evening, board. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Verónica Adams. Uh, Alondra Torres y yo seremos sus intérpretes en español de esta noche. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la mesa directiva. Esta reunión está siendo transmitida por el canal en español de Zoom. Para escuchar esta sesión en español, oprima el botón que dice interpretación en la parte inferior de su pantalla y seleccione el idioma de español. En este menú también puede seleccionar la opción de silenciar el audio original en inglés. Thank you. Okay, we've had a request to um, amend the agenda um, to move item N1, which is the um, information item on the Spanish dual language immersion. Um, and it, the request was to move it before section I action items of board governance. Um, can I get a motion? So moved, Rotterman. Second. I have a motion to approve from trustee Rotterman and a second from trustee Gonzalez. Um, we'll do a roll call. Trustee Rotterman. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Canova, Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. And I vote yes. Trustee, um, student trustee Valdez? Yes. And that passes uh, six to zero with Trustee Ryan being absent. Um, now we'll go to uh, our superintendent. Thank you, Vice President Lieberman. For, before I begin, I wanted to, uh, Trustee Ryan asked me to share that she her children are doing a production at Huerta this evening, and there's only one production, so she will be returning after after that, and she sees them per perform. So, good evening. Uh, as springtime is upon us, one of the unique features that comes with spring is our beginning of our CASP assessments. Um, our assessment window this year is March 25th through May 17th. Only one school, Wilcox High School, has begun Thus far, they began May 26th, and Santa Clara will begin the week of April 8th. So we wish all of our students uh, great luck in showing the, the good work that they've done this year. We continue to see evidence of our mission of equity and inclusion and work to ensure that our schools are safe and welcoming places for every student, regardless of who they are, and are, on a daily basis reaffirm our commitment to that and ensure that we're um, seeing that lived out in our daily practice. I had a great opportunity recently to visit both McDonald High School and Briarwood. I was so impressed with Briarwood at seeing the staff and students move very calmly and orderly through an earthquake drill, and they did just a phenomenal job. Um, also, McDonald, McDonald High School is hard at work creating inclusive and innovative spaces for learning, and I commend the staff. It's really hard to build something new from the ground up, and they've done great, great, great work there. Uh, I also recently this week got to spend some time at the Wilson campus where I got to visit the Family Resource Center that has served a total of 2,888 families as of January. Our wellness, um, uh, wellness center, our wellness staff have provided counseling to over 2,500 students district-wide as of February. 
Our discipline and attendance office and our attendance liaison has conducted over 200 home visits since the start of the school year. I went to the enrollment center that has had 3,953 in-person visits to date since August and the Wilson Wellness Center. Um, our wellness centers across the district have had over 16,000 student visits this year. So we're very proud of their work that they're doing and how they're supporting our students. I was so impressed with seeing um, our values as a district lived in so many ways at the Wilson campus. This is Battle of the Classes week at Santa Clara High School. Today is anything but a backpack day, and I understand that there was a certain Principal Shelby that had a tool belt on. Um, tomorrow, students will gather in the gym to compete, and best luck to all of them, and have a great time. I wanted to share a couple of great things that are happening at New Valley High School, just a couple of highlights. Through a grant obtained by art teacher Moya Devine, we combined our art and creative writing classes to engage in theater for social justice workshops led by the nonprofit Teatro Vision. Uh, students are learning improv, voice projection, and physical movement to express themes around social justice. Video production students are creating three minute videos, a, a three minute video about New Valley High School for potential parents, students, and for our model school application that they're working on. Good luck with that and, and exciting endeavor. We have several students from New Valley that are testing for the state, state seal of biliteracy, and 14 students are dual enrolled in community college and receive weekly support from teachers and counselors. Our, one of our English teachers, Lindsay Quoto, and Vice President, Vice President, <laughs> Vice Principal Estrella Tovar have done a brilliant job facilitating the development of our restorative MTSS behavior discipline system that has been a key focus this year. And there have been a number of other great activities happening at New Valley High School. Our enrollment center that I mentioned is at hard at work processing open enrollment requests. The first application period has closed. Families were sent open enrollment offers and waitlist notifications at the beginning of March. The enrollment center has processed all current open enrollment offers and continues to regularly monitor the waitlist in collaboration with a cross departmental team and site principals. Families can track their children's waitlist number through the online enrollment system. The late enrollment application period will open on April 2nd at 9 a.m. and close the first day of school at 4 p.m. Applications received during this period will be placed on the current waitlist in the order that they are received. Families will remain on the open enrollment waitlist through January 2025. I just want to close by saying we have just shy of 30,000 acts of kindness logged on our SCUSD Kind website, representing the hard work of our boys and girls, students, staff, and community in being kind to one another. I'd like to give a shout out to our teachers and our classified staff who have helped to promote our viral kindness by planning activities, supporting students, and creating visuals to help us all remember to choose kindness each and every day. And to our amazing students who are showing how to be kind each and every day themselves throughout our district. I'd like to challenge us to surpass 50,000 acts of kindness this year on our road to transforming our community through 1 million acts of kindness. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Dr. Waddell. Uh, we will have our student Senate report from um, Shiv Dagar from Wilcox High School. It's on the base. Uh, good evening, board, audience. Thank you for helping me with the mic. Um, I'm here to tell you why Wilcox High School is the best high school in Santa Clara. Uh, my name is Shiv Dogger. I'm the student senator for Wilcox High School. And yeah, let's begin. Um, so our first event is the toy drive. So part of what makes Wilcox so great is not 
is that it's not just a school, but also a community. And my personally, my favorite event is our toy drive, where we get to see the happy, smiling faces of elementary schoolers at George Main Elementary School, and we get to skip school. Um, so this is one of our most successful toy drives for quite a few years, since we were able to actually get enough toys uh, that each student at George Main Elementary School was actually able to get two toys. So what we did was that each class was able to collect donations of toys or alternatively $5 bills. And the winning class would get a pizza or a donut party of their choice. So we were able to get a large turnout and it went extremely smoothly and well. Fantastic night. <laughs> so at Wilcox, instead of battle of the classes, we have what's called fantastic. So all of our different um, seniors, juniors, sophomores, or freshmen compete in games such as tug of war, known as castle ball, or just class yells to see who can scream the loudest. So obviously the winners were our senior class. And this was also one of our most successful school events as we were able to sell about a thousand tickets, which was one of our highest ticket sales since before the pandemic. So it was really heartening to see how Wilcox community was able to rebound back after the COVID pandemic, and we had and we ran another successful Fantastics. So, in response to the unfortunate epidemic of um, fentanyl around the country, the Student Senate decided that, and the district uh, thankfully decided to host a fentanyl awareness rally at our high at all of our high schools. So. At Wilcox, ours was on the February 28th and 29th. So, and students were able to take home a box of Narcan with parental permission, which is essentially the um, antidote to fentanyl overdose. And they were educated about the dangers of fentanyl and what to do in case of an overdose. And which I think was really important because so often in our education about narcotics, we fail to educate students about what to do when they're in a situation just that they're bad. And I think this kind of holistic education has been really beneficial to students who um, reacted well and were very interested to learn about this activity. We're not at Wilcox, we still have quite a few events to plan. So I think one of our most enjoyed events of the year is our Wilcox Multicultural Rally because we have such a diverse student body. We have different clubs such as Indian Club, Chinese Club, Jewish Student Union, who all will participate in this um, multicultural rally and perform a dance for us and show us what their culture is all about. Not only is it an opportunity to celebrate one's own culture, but it's a great opportunity for people to interact with and learn about other cultures as well. Also, we have our second blood drive of the year where we will, where through the help of Stanford Blood Drive, students age 16 and up can donate their blood for a good cause. Last but not least, everybody's favorite classic high school prom. So that's going to be in May, and that's always at Villa Ragusa and Campbell, and that's also one of our most um, successful events of the year. So the Wilcox student body is uh, looking forward to that. Thank you so much, board. Thank you so much for your report. Um, we'll move now to uh, reports from our union presidents, Ms. Waisaki. Good evening, everyone. As I shared with you before closed session, 68% of our membership re recently voted on ratification of our tentative agreements. We're happy to share that those who voted of those who voted, 98% approved the agreements. This coming week, UTSD will hold our leadership elections for the 2024-2025 school year. Our leadership positions are currently one-year positions, with the president position being on a two-year cycle. I look forward to sharing our election results with you at our April school board meeting. UTSD would like to appreciate and thank all of our leaders who served in leadership roles this past year as well as thank our members willing to step into this challenging but rewarding work as we move forward. Having a highly engaged membership helps our system run more efficiently and smoothly and allows us to resolve conflict at the lowest level. At our last board meeting, my message came from my fortune cookie, work hard, be nice. That's been bouncing around in my head for two weeks and yes, I may just turn it into a t-shirt. 
Today, I'd like to focus on the first powerful sentence, work hard. I believe you all know the work we do is hard. Fostering effective partnerships is hard. Sharing decision-making is hard. Spending time creating messages, editing messages, abandoning messages, and starting all over is hard. Collaborating on contract language is hard. But do you know what else is hard? Damage control. Not being included in difficult decisions when they first pop up and then expecting UTSC to clean up the mess, that's hard. Excluding us from troubleshooting areas of weakness or identify a message that will most likely miss the mark, that's hard. It seems like damage control is twice, if not three times as difficult as getting it right from the beginning. I want to be clear with the board this evening and tell you that UTSC has a very strong partnership with our superintendent, and we thank Dr. Waddell for the time and effort he puts into the work. We regularly problem solve and brainstorm together, together as matters bubble up in hopes of avoiding painful and stressful situations. It cannot always be avoided, yet many times damage can be mitigated. Unfortunately, that is not the case with all departments in the district office. We have members still trying to heal from the way they were recently treated in a painful reorganization. We have finger pointing and departments assigning responsibilities to others for the mess they caused. We keep seeming to hit we keep seeming to be hit with surprises and changes that could have been avoided had the teachers been included earlier. UTSC sincerely hopes that all departments in the district office will commit to partnering with UTSC in such a way to as avoid future, and further conflicts. Finally, I'd like to close that as educators, we support our students. We support them when they struggle in the classroom and we celebrate their successes with them. We applaud our students when they have the courage to stand up in a public meeting and have the strength and protected right to share their concerns. We literally applaud them. Supporting our students when they show courage is just that, and I would discourage everyone in this room or in our community from inferring anything else. This concludes our UTSC report. Thank you, Ms. Wysocki. Ms. Villarreal? Good evening, Dr. Wydell, Board of Trustees, and our student trustee, Mr. Valdez and Ms. Burrell, don't wanna forget you. As I mentioned several times before, Santa Clara, last time it was happening, tonight it has happened, we were able to send 12 paraeducators to CSE's annual paraeducator conference. It was truly a wonderful learning experience for those who attended. Here are some of the things they had to say. It was awesome, thank you so much to all who made it possible. I can't wait to share everything I learned with my coworkers. The conference was fantastic, a truly wonderful opportunity to meet new people and learn information to better ourselves. It was such a positive experience. I learned a lot and met new people along the way. I will forever be grateful. Not only did I meet new friends and new people, but I also learned a lot that I'm now able to apply in my daily work. All of these quotes provide the perfect example of how the district and the associations can put our heads together and provide excellent opportunities that empower and enrich employees. And then that has a direct result on the success of our students. So I'd like to put, put a thanks out to Special Ed Director Kathy Alanese, Professional Learning Director Karen Allard, and Assistant Superintendent Kathy Knabel for working with CSEA to make this happen. And I really hope this week can continue to do this in the years to come. In my continuing effort to bring recognition to classified employees throughout the district, tonight I would like to introduce you to an often overlooked department, purchasing. Three classified employees, purchasing technicians Monica Padron and Gina Cruzen, and purchasing agent Alexia Aguilar under their manager, Tammy T, support 40, 54 district sites and departments. This district, unlike many others, has centralized purchasing, which means all the purchasing goes through one department, which means that um, 
it, everybody, all purchases go through this department, as I said, repetition for emphasis, as I learned in a speech class. But it's um, not limited, but includes the bond POs, travel, textbooks, classroom supplies, Chromebooks, and so on and so on. Their role sometimes goes unnoticed, but their impact resonates deeply in every classroom, every office, and every facility within our educational community. Their commitment ensures that our students and staff have the tools they need to thrive. So far this fiscal year, they have processed over 7,000 purchase requisitions. In one year, in excess of $150 million for all funds go through this department. Tammy, their manager, wants me to share her appreciation for her classified team. She says, their diligence and commitment to our district is unwavering. I am grateful for their hard work, teamwork, and dedication. So thank you to that team for all that they do for the students and staff in our school district. Last Friday was a professional learning day for all employees, but classified employees had a very successful day. The sessions were some of the most well attended in many years. Classified staff attending trainings and workshops that included uh, topics such as seasons of change regarding, regarding transitions and how you need to have a strength-based approach to changes, uh, fostering a positive work environment, providing excellent customer service, and extended training for our district safety care training. Thank you to Joel Stephanie, our Classified Professional Learning Specialist, for per putting together this outstanding day of learning. Today, even though I'm not wearing black and orange because I have to wear CSA for board meetings, was the opening day of Major League Baseball. So I'm pleased to be able to include my much anticipated and sometimes appreciated Giants report. The Giants came in second place today against the San Diego Padres, so they were the first runner up. This concludes my report. The next time I will see will be after spring break, so I hope you have time to relax, rejuvenate, and reset. Thank you so much, Ms. Villarreal. Um, okay, we will now move to public comment on unagendized items. So if uh, any member of the public, either in the room or on Zoom, has a uh, comment on an item that is not on our agenda tonight, now is the time to speak. Um, but before that, I will read our policy on civility. Uh, the public must follow board policy 1310.1 on civility, which states the following. This policy promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly, uh, oops, my thing crashed. Okay. Um, uh, among district employees, parents, and the public, this policy is not intended to deprive any person of his or her right to freedom of expression, but only to maintain to the extent possible and reasonable a safe harassment-free workplace for our students and staff. In the interest of presenting district employees as positive role models to the children of this district, as well as to the community, as CUSD encourages positive communication and discourages volatile, hostile, or aggressive actions, the district seeks the public's cooperation with this endeavor. So I have three slips for um, public comment on unagendized items. Um, if anyone else would like to speak, you can turn in a slip or raise your hand. Um, I have Marina Santiago, um, Iram Santiago, and Geraldine Cristal Gonzalez. Um, if you'd like to come up. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Ayram Fernanda Santiago. Tengo nueve años de edad. Voy en tercer grado. Estuve en la escuela de Scotland con la maestra Jenkins. 
Estar en una escuela de doble inversión me ha ayudado en mi vida diaria a poderme comunicar con mi familia cuando voy a México. También ayuda para hacer más amistades en la escuela. He podido transmitir, transmitir a mi mamá cuando vamos al hospital o necesita hacer una compra porque no sabe hablar en inglés. Muy bien, yo he sido un gran apoyo al traducir. Por eso son importantes escuelas de doble inversión para nuestra comunidad. Hello. Good evening. Evening. My name is Iram Fernandez Santiago. I'm nine years old. I go to third grade. I study at the school Scott Lane with the teacher Miss Jenkins. Being in a do double inversion school has helped me in my daily life. Being able to communicate with my family when I go to Mexico. Also, it helps me to make more my friendships at school. I have been able to translate for my mom when she, we go to the hospital or when she needs to buy something because she doesn't know English well, very well. I have been a, a great help to translate to people. That's why double inversion schools are important for our community. Hello, good night, my good night. My name is Marina Santiago. I am seven years old. I go to first grade with Miss Garibo and I study in the school Scotland. I believe that being in a bilingual school is important because it helps learn about the difference of cultures. I have been able to go on vacations to Mexico and it helps me communicate with my family that doesn't speak English and have happy moments with them. I have also been able to read books in English and Spanish like Beto and Piggy. I really like being a able to understand the book. I am thankful for Double immersion school, they are important for the future and present in our community. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Marina Santiago. Tengo siete años de edad. Voy en primer grado con la maestra Garibo y estudio en la escuela Cotley. Yo creo que lo importante de estar en una escuela bilingüe ayuda a aprender la diferencia de culturas. He podido ir de vacaciones a México y me, ha, me sirvió aprender español para poder hablar, hablar con mi familia que no habla inglés y tener momentos felices. También puedo leer libros en, en, en inglés, como el libro de Gerardo y Cerdita. Me gusta mucho poder entender el libro. Gracias por la escuela de doble inversión. Son importantes para un mejor presidente y futuro en nuestra comunidad. Gracias. Hi, my name is Geraldine, and I'm in the fourth grade. I've been doing this program since kindergarten. When I started, I didn't know any English. But by the time I was in first grade, I started to learn English. Now I can read, write, and talk fluently, thanks to the program. I want to continue this program so I don't forget the two languages. I also think it's unique to know two languages. Thank you, and I hope we can continue this program. Thank you so much, girls. Uh, no, mom, wants mom wants to speak. Okay. Eh, hablo en español. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es 
Ruth, soy Madre Irani y Marina de, de la Escuela Scarlet. My name is Ruth and I'm Marina and Janina's mom from Scott Lane. Eh, nos gustaría que ampliaran el doble inversión porque nos ayuda para nuestra cultura, para no perder nuestras culturas. I would like for the dual immersion program to be uh, expanded because it helps our cultures. Esto, gracias. That's all, thank you. Gracias. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any other uh, public comment on unagendized items? Okay, come up, please. You'll have two minutes. Please remember to push the button on the microphone if it's not already. Vice President Lieberman. Green. Yes. We do have dual language immersion on the agenda. Is that correct? We do. Um, the the slips that when the, they were turned in, they requested to speak during unagendized, but okay. didn't specify the topic. So that's why they just, were in unagenda. Just wanted people to realize that there was another opportunity. Yes, and we uh, and we've moved that item up from N one to uh, before I. Good evening, my name is Dee Umo, and I oppose the equity framework that's being proposed in the district. I rejected this framework from the gate because it basically states that black and Latino children um, are not competent enough to compete with their white and Asian peers. This premise alone is enough for me as a black mom with black children in this district to reject this framework. Instead of targeting students who struggle with supports to reach proficiency like we did in the past, this framework does the opposite by lower, lowering the academic standards for all children, which guarantees to exacerbate the well-known pervasive and widespread learning crisis in this country. Um, equity pushes, punishes high achieving students. Honors classes, gate programs, skipping courses, and traditional A through F grading um, is being removed, thus lowering expectations under the guise of achieving equity. Key factors to achieve success in life, such as hard work, dedication, and motivation are being downplayed. Individual accountability and responsibility for one's actions are instead relegated to student group, a student's group identity and perceived privilege based on race, gender, and sexual orientation. Student discipline um, will deteriorate even further under this framework. Restorative justice practices are creating a culture of chaos in classrooms. I've witnessed this personally. Um, <clears throat> The rising crime rate all over this country is, in, is inextricably linked to children exempt from discipline and not learning self-restraint and respect for authority at home and for the purposes of this framework in the schools. The best way, in my humble opinion, to serve students is to provide equal opportunities and ensure high standards for all children. Students are unique in their gifts, abilities, and interests and backgrounds. We must end the practice of placing widely differing learners into a one size fits all educational model, which doesn't provide equal opportunity for all students, but instead um, e un uniform performance outcomes for all students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other unagendized public comment in the room? Please come up. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Dr. Waddell, board members, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Uh, my name is Shani. I am a member of the Jewish community in Santa Clara Unified School District. And I wanted to address the recent cancellation of the Jewish speaker event at Wilcox. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding in the community about what happened there. Um, and I wanted to clarify a little of that. The students, the students who organized the event dedicated a lot of time to work on that. And the event was approved by the district. But as the event um, got nearer, there was an online bullying campaign against the Jewish club, pressuring the students to cancel the event. The campaign originated from external groups from San Jose State University that already disrupted another event at SJSU. And it escalated to the point of a real concern that the speaker would be blocked from entering the school. Due to these safety concerns, the district made the decision to cancel the event, and we appreciate the district for putting the student's safety first. It is difficult to convey the emotional distress that was experienced by the students when they were faced with just negative online uh, bullying and, and such a campaign that included a press release by a national organization 
that further contributed to them feeling singled out. We appreciate the district and the school administration working to address this challenging situation. Last but not least, I would like to thank um, Trustee Moorhead for caring for the well-being of the students and for stepping up as a Santa Clara Unified School District community member to provide context regarding the event's cancellation at the last board meeting. We truly appreciate Trustee Muir's head effort to de-escalate tension, reduce divisiveness, and unite everyone in the community. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Waddell, board members. Uh, thank you for letting me speak tonight as well. My name is Ravital. I'm a mother at Wilcox High. And I'm here also speaking on behalf of the Jewish Israeli community um, to reiterate what Shani has said. Um, it's very important for us to have the, the true reason of the cancellation of the speaker event on March 21st um, be out there publicly because it has put our children, the Jewish club children, in a very bad light publicly. And um, I believe Shani covered the real um, cause of the cancellation. Um, while saying that, um, I would like to say that these are very challenging times for everyone. And I'm here on behalf of my community, so for us. And I would like to express how thankful our community is to um, Dr. Waddell and the board for, as well as Wilcox staff and um, the district, of course, for working so tirelessly to help de-escalate the tensions and the situation in the community. All we want is a safe environment for all children, and all we want is to protect their values, their rights. Um, I would also like to, to thank Trustee Moorhead for... Um, de-escalating, her work to de-escalate the situation, standing up and putting the reasons for the cancellation um, because the current reasons out there are causing divisiveness. And I would like to thank her on behalf of our community for working in uniting both communities together and keeping our children safe in the schools. Thank you very much. Any any other comment? Okay. Is there anyone in the Zoom? No? Okay. So we'll close public comment on unagendized items. Um, okay. We'll move now to G1, uh, consent items for human resources. May I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Roderman. Okay. We do roll call for our votes tonight because Trustee Fairchild is on uh, Zoom. Is she on? She's called in. Okay. Um, Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Knova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. And I vote yes, so that passes seven to zero. Okay, uh, we'll move to H, consent items, H1 through H21. And a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Rotterman. Okay. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. And tr student trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. So that passes seven to zero with student trustee Valdez also voting yes. Uh, now we'll move to item number N1. We're moving I1. Uh huh. We're moving N1 N. up. Um, the information item for the Spanish dual language immersion uh, program. Um, Dr. Waddell. Yes, we're pleased this evening to bring a, a report about dual language immersion. We're very um, excited about the work that has happened at Scott Lane. Um, uh, that has that has been such a great model of dual language immersion. And we know this group of students is progressing through the grade levels and are beginning to plan ahead 
about what um, what their future in middle school will look like. So there have been some early conversations and um, we are looking forward to a year of planning with our staff and with our community around what that might look like in the year to follow. So I will at this time introduce Cl uh, Principal Claudia Corpus and Justin Ponzio. Well, good evening, and thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Claudia Corpus, and I am the principal at Scott Lane Elementary School. And I'm Justin Ponzi. I'm the principal at Books for Middle School. We are excited to be here tonight, um, giving the opportunity to talk about where our designing program of excellence of Spanish dual language immersion program is at Scott Lane and the pathway moving forward for our students when they enter the middle school. Part of the discussion is really where it all began at um, Scott Lane, what the current program exists, and, and what is it looking like right now. We heard from a couple of our students earlier, the benefits to our students in our community, and then this is kind of the discussion about what does a pathway forward look, sound, and feel like. The inception of the program, we are so admirable of our staff our families, our students who launched this dual language program for the first time in Santa Clara Unified during the pandemic. So this program started in 2021 during COVID when they were learning through a screen. So it's just unbelievable the success our students have had with the first year learning through the screen and that risk that the families took and the students and the staffs to believe in the program and what it does for our students in the future, um, moving towards a global society, being bilingual, bicultural, um, biliterate. And so in the first year, we started with one first grade class and two kindergartens. And here you can see the DLI implementation timeline throughout the school years. Um, this year, we have two classes from kinder, first, second, and third. And our first generation that started in first grade is in fourth grade. A lot of those fourth graders are here and they're gonna speak to us about their passion for the program and what the importance of the program and what it means to them and some of our parents as well. So by the time we get to 20, is it 25, 26? We will have our first generation, so our first class moving on to sixth grade. And so we're here to think about what would that look like for our students in this program. So our current status, we want our students to be bilingual, bicultural, and biliterate. We are implementing the 90-10 model at Scott Lane, which has been, um, research as the model with the highest um, scores for our students in being bilingual. Um, the students are learning the same standards that all Santa Clara Unified School students are learning in all the elementary levels. Um, they learn for Spanish literacy, and then the students are also learning um, English language development for our English language learners. So as I said prior, we have two kindergarten classes, two first grade, two third grade and one fourth grade. So our, our, our um, program is growing, um, students are interested, families are interested, 60% of our students are from our community in the program and 40% are coming through the open enrollment. Thanks. So thinking about how dual language enrollment really fits into our Vision 2035, the graduate portrait, the adult portrait, and the systems portrait, the DLI program, it, it truly allows our students to fulfill what it means to be a graduate of Santa Clara Unified School District. Equity ambassadors, the ability to think critically, to be part of this community and to really operate at an international level, um, the DLI students will have an opportunity to really be competitive once they leave 
our walls. Um, looking at what the idea of the adult portrait and how we can support our students and our community and then that system and really looking at that system of how do we as a school district truly help support our students and our community to thrive in this ever-changing global environment. I was talking to somebody last uh, earlier today about last year at this time, I think we were just starting to talk about chat GPT and open AI and thinking about what it would look like for our students from our community to be really on the forefront of this technology innovation and what that means for DLI and how we can really mold those two together. So the idea of really having this be an informational experience and really thinking about it and processing information. Right now, Scott Lane Elementary is where the DLI program is. And we as a school district have to really think about what does that mean for our students in our community and what does that pathway look like? What would it look like to have the DLI continue in, in middle school? What would it look like to continue in high school so our students are really getting these opportunities? They're getting that seal of biliteracy. They're entering advanced placement classes at an earlier age and really changing kind of some of that trajectory of having students being college eligible by, the, by sophomore year, really. Um, and so looking at it as a holistic experience and what that means to for us as Santa Clara Unified School District. So what would this look like at the middle school level? So here we have put some information for you about in the sixth grade, um, the, the programs that are established in California follow this model of in the sixth grade, there's a Spanish language arts class and a Spanish social studies. In the seventh grade, it moves into a Spanish language arts and Spanish science. And then in the eighth grade, you have Spanish language arts and Spanish science. And then they take a placement test to see where they would be in high school because our students have been learning Spanish since kindergarten. So by the time they get to high school, um, Spanish one, two is not gonna work or two, three. So they're gonna need to test to see where they would land. And then they would move forward on just like um, Mr. Poncio spoke about um, starting to earn those credits or AP classes. Um, in Spanish and beyond. So this comes to us from the California Department of Education. The California Department of Education has set goals, not mandates, but really looking at how do we help prepare our entire state for the, the 21st century and looking at what that means for all of our students across the state to be have it or have this opportunity. Um, what they are sharing on the, the goals are that by 2030, which is six years from now, you have we have students who are in multiple language programs. And then my biggest thought is at 2040, again, this is a goal. By 2040, you have students who are truly earning that state seal of biliteracy. Well, those students are being born on March 28th, 2024, right? So those are the students who are being born today. And this is the program that California is hoping to have. So when we think about what that means for Santa Clara Unified School District and how that can really support the school or the state's goals to be um, to have a biliterate and bicultural experience for our students, it really falls in line with with that. And so the idea of what does that pathway forward look like? Again, the idea is how do we engage all of our partners to make sure that this is what we really think should happen for our students? What does this look like to create a, a full pathway? How are we engaging with all of our, our groups, our community, our labor partners, um, our staff, everybody to make sure that this is what we think is an important process for our students? Um, how do we then support that with our, uh, our hiring practices and our curriculum as well. Um, I think he got it all. Um, yeah. And training, and getting the, the necessary training for, for our staff to continue to support the program and moving forward. So. Question. Thank you so much. I'll open it to questions from uh, trustees, Trustee Gonzalez. Well, thank you for the presentation and the, uh, the students who uh, were able to talk to us in two different languages. I think it's always nice to see that we're trying to live uh, or, or make sure that our community and our students are basically learning 
not only uh, the difference between two cultures, but learning to be able to speak in a in a really uh, world that is um, really global world, right? And uh, I guess the question that I would have is, uh, I know that um, you mentioned professional development. I think that one of the things that we as a board, we try to make sure that you have the resources that are needed. Is there anything else that that you require or whether I think there was some uh, books and curriculum, right? What, what if you had a, if you just had a, you know, a checkbook and you said, okay, we need, we need this. What, what else? Are... I don't know the cost, but I do know what we, our current state is and what we need. And we've had some really good conversations with the Department of Education and they're very supportive, but we will need a budget because we do need training for our staff to continue. We do need the curriculum. Um, and then we also need coaching. So we need like a TOSA who can support and, and coach our DLI teachers as well um, moving forward and also having um, a consultant at the district level or someone at the district level who can support the program and bringing us together, um, the elementary, the pathway, right? The elementary to the middle and then to the high school and doing that planification. So those are like the foundation that we need to solidify to ensure that we do have a K or hopefully a TK through 12 is, is the dream for Santa Clara to have this um, program that many districts have had for 35 years in, in place. And so um, that's why I'm here. I'm at Santa Clara because I'm extremely passionate about this program. Um, I've been a teacher in the program. I've been a district coach and I taught principals in the program. So I believe in it. I know what it does for kids and how pride the pride they have and the leadership skills they attain by being in a program where sometimes they're the leaders when the class is in Spanish, sometimes they're the leaders when the class is in English, and then we have our bilingual kids in the class who can do both roles and support the kids. So it's just a beautiful thing. If you get an opportunity to come tour our classrooms and see what our students are doing, I think you would fall in love with it and know that we are truly giving our students a gift and they deserve it. No, thank you. and. Uh... Thank you for the presentation. I think it's always it's always in, uh, something that we as as a board are learning. I know uh, I have friends from from SoCal that sit on other boards that, that have gone through the COVID conferences and things like that. So they understand uh, an ID10 model and the differences between the different models. So I think it's important for us to be aware of this so that we can support the community. Así podemos apoyarlos ustedes para que los estudiantes suyos puedan aprender más, no solo en uno idioma, pero más de un idioma y así creo que es algo que es muy importante para que nosotros y uh, no solo nosotros ya más uh, más uh, roquillos ¿verdad? pero ustedes también uh, pueden, pueden así sus hijos puedan uh, uh, los podemos apoyar para que sus, sus hijos se, se, se tengan mejor oportunidades ¿verdad? porque así dos idiomas es mejor que una y uh, ojalá que hasta ter, tres idiomas puedan aprender we do have some students that are 30, their third language Trustee Canova. I, I love your passion. I love the students in the presentations. I definitely, I'd like to work with Gary to go do a tour. I'd like to tour that with you. Um, just really exciting. Uh, and it was mentioned, ChatGPT was mentioned, students are able to, to um, function so well in two different languages. Think of coding, think of Python, think of artificial intelligence. Uh, these are all languages. And having that ability and that versatility to bounce from one language to the next language, without a miss. I mean, that is what technology is all about. That is what's gonna set our students apart from all the other students around this planet. So this is really exciting work you're doing. Trustee Rotterman. Go turn that on. A DLI program was a dream of mine starting in 2004. So it's almost 20 years later. And we finally, in 2020, got the program up. I am, had the opportunity to visit the program several times to meet the teachers, to meet the administration at the school. And I can't tell you how excited and happy I am, such passion, such uh, just belief in it. And then when you get to talk to the kids and they're so excited about it as well, uh, I'm just, just thrilled that we finally have this program up. I'm glad to see that we're looking at extending it through the rest of their uh, educational career. Um, and he asked if what you need let us know. I'm I'm there. I want to I want to see this thing go big. Thank you, Trustee Muirhead. 
Thank you. Um, I'm really excited and, and glad to hear that it's doing so well, that there's such enrollment, especially the uh, the number of the percentage of kids who are coming in through open enrollment. I think that that says a lot about the program because families across the district are choosing it. So that's, to me, that is really powerful. Um, I know that the, the middle school extension uh, is just very early in your um, in your discussion, because we're not there yet, um, and there's there's a lot of work to be done before um, that is set. Um, but I I wanted to just make sure I understood um, the the little slide that you had about the DLI program in middle school. You talked about adding um, each year a Spanish language arts class and some other Spanish class. So that means it's the same curriculum but in that language, or are they also taking an English language arts and a social studies class, for instance, in sixth grade, plus uh, a Spanish language arts that's teaching them Spanish language and a Spanish social studies that's teaching them a different social studies? Or, or what, what's the vision for how the kids are sometimes in English and sometimes in Spanish at the middle school level? What, what are you just thinking? And I know it's really early, but early thoughts on that. So these programs already exist in 30, um, in many districts. And so they already have that. So we would look into um, those schools and see what is thriving. So we wouldn't do two social studies classes like a Spanish and an English class. It would only be in Spanish if that was the class. And then they would have their Spanish language arts class, but they would also have their English language arts class. Like it doesn't take... Um, it doesn't take in place of it, but there's models out there that are already thriving and working. So we would be looking at those models and seeing what are they teaching and what are the scores of those students that are thriving in these programs that would be more beneficial. But you're right, we're just starting the conversations. We're not necessarily there yet, but there's so many programs around us in these districts that are very, are thriving, who we would look to for that expertise. Yeah, I'm sure there's, there's places that you can get help from. Um, I, I just think the, the messaging around it that your student is getting the same education, they're just adding the the language component to it. I, I think that that's really key, that you're not going to miss out on something because you're doing the language. Correct. It's an add-on. addition. Yeah. It's an addition. That's great. That's really good. Thanks. Trustee Ryan? I just want to uh, particularly thank the students. There may be more students who will speak in a little bit. Um, but the students who spoke already uh, an amazing job and just a testament to um, uh, how much they're learning and how, like coming to a board meeting and speaking at seven years old, that's really impressive. Um, so really appreciated hearing that. I am just sad that my daughter was too old to join the program when it started. So, um, uh, but I'm glad to see we finally have it in the district and I know it's very uh, popular. Uh, the one question I had is, do you anticipate that there may be some students who would want to, to join into the program um, at middle school who maybe have not been in the program now and and what might those requirements be? Yes, of course. If the, the classes are there for them, they can be tested in because those, um, as you know, like we spoke earlier, these children are going to come with high levels of that academic Spanish vocabulary. And so we need to be able that to, we want all students to succeed. So if they're going to come into the program at that grade level, we need to ensure we have that assessment ready for them mm -hmm. to make sure they're going to thrive in the program. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, Do, is, I, I can't tell if trustee, okay. Does she want to? And I'll just, I'll add, uh, I'd like, I'd like uh, trustee Canova's idea about going on a tour. So <laughs> yeah. I'd like to join that as well. Me too. She's good. Okay. No comment. Okay. So we'll, um, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank um, you I for look having forward us. to learning more as we go further down the road, uh, towards implementing this in middle school, but thank you so much. And we're excited for the opportunity. So thank you. And we also have Scotty, our mascot couldn't not come. So we're excited that he made it. He missed his soccer practice <laughs> just to be here with us. So thank you, Scotty, for joining us tonight. Muchas gracias, Scotty, por estar aquí con nosotros. I don't know how Scotty can bear to be in that costume that long. <laughs> it's so cute. Nicely done, Trustee Rotterman. Okay.
Um, I have a bunch of slips for uh, public comment. Um, so I will call your name. Um, you have uh, two minutes to speak. Um, and uh, if there are others that want to speak after I go through the slips, just raise your hand, okay? So our uh, first speaker is Eunice Vasquez, and then Jade Zendejas, and Riley Allen. Yeah. Buenas tardes, mi nombre, mi nombre es Yunis Vázquez, tengo nueve años y soy una estudiante del programa de doble inmersión en la escuela Scott Lane. Yo soy mexicoamericana y estoy aquí para decirles qué tan importante es para mí y mi familia el poder continuar hablando y aprendiendo mi idioma español. Me siento bien cuando puedo ayudar a otros traduciendo de español a inglés o inglés a español. Además, puedo comunicarme con mis abuelos y familiares. También me podría comunicar con personas de otros países hispanos. Así que me gustaría pedir el apoyo de nuestro distrito escolar para continuar con el programa en la escuela secundaria y preparatoria. Gracias por su atención. Are we going to get translation of the of those? <laughs> Could we get translation for yeah, thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Jade Sendejas. Me gustaría compartirles lo mucho que disfruto el programa de inmersión dual. Disfruto hablar, escribir y leer en dos idiomas. Por ejemplo, puedo hablar con compañeros que solo hablan español o inglés. También leo libros en dos idiomas y disfruto música de dos culturas. Para nosotros es importante seguir el programa de inmersión dual en la escuela media para seguir el desarrollo académico y cultural en, en dos idiomas. Hi, my name is Hades Sendejas. I would like to share I will I would like to share how much I enjoy the DLI program. I enjoy writing, reading and speaking in two languages. For example, talking with classmates that only speak Spanish or English. I can also read in two languages and I enjoy music for from two cultures. It is important to us to continue the DLI program in middle school to develop academic and cultural skills to in two languages. Thank you for your time. Gracias por su tiempo. Hola, me llamo Riley y estoy en segundo grado en Scott Lane. Este es mi tercer año en el programa de doble inmersión en español. Gracias por la oportunidad de poder hablar y leer en dos idiomas. Es divertido estar en este programa porque cada día tú puedes aprender algo nuevo. Mi maestra y mis compañeros me enseñan a practicar español y yo les enseño a practicar inglés. Mis sueños cuando sea mayor yo pueda ser veterinaria. Gracias por traerme este regalo tan maravilloso. Hello, my name is Riley and I am in second grade. I am in my third year of July. Thank you for the opportunity to become bilingual. It's fun to be in, be in the DLI because every day you can learn something new. My teacher and my friends help me to learn Spanish, and I help them to learn English. My hope and dream is one day I could be a veterinarian. Thank you for allowing me to have the gift of two languages. Next, we'll have Alma Rules, Julian Estrada, and Luisa Herrera. Mi nombre es Alma. Oh, wait. 
My name is Alma. I've been in this program since I was in preschool, and I wanted to con continue this program where I could be fluent in Spanish. Not only am I doing this for my education, I am doing it for other students. For example, the students that have been in this program for as long as I have, and for the new kids. We need this bilingual program to continue for kids who don't want to lose touch in their native language, and for those whose first language isn't English. This program helped me expand in my own culture and those around me. I'm sure others can say the same. I hope we can continue this program and hopes a better future. Hi, my name is Julian, and I would like to continue the dual language program because when I did not know Spanish, I could not understand or talk to my grandparents. Also, it could help me if I need to move to other places and I could talk to people that only speak Spanish. Yo no podría hablar, leer o escribir en español y yo quiero aprender más español. Es divertido y yo no puedo aprender español en cuatro años. Necesita tiempo, por lo menos seis años. Necesito más español porque puedo ayudar a personas que no hablan inglés. In conclusion, I would like for the dual language program to continue in middle school and high school. In conclusion, yo quiero continuar el programa doble inmersión en la secundaria y la preparatoria. Good evening, my name is Risa Herrera. I'm mother of Miguel Eduardo Herrera. He's a first grader in Scott Lane Elementary and is in the dual language immersion program since kindergarten. Um, I was not planning in um, enrolling Miguel in the DLI program. In fact, in, he's uh, his three older brothers all went all attended to Heyman Elementary School. He wanted to follow his big brother's footsteps. Towards the end of Miguel's sports, sports class at Wilson Preschool, we were introduced with the list of potential schools for students to start in kindergarten. And that list was Scott Lane DLI program. This certainly caught my eye, but I had some reservations on how this would affect my son academically. Will he be falling behind? We decided to enroll Miguel at Scott Lane. Um, his first year in kindergarten was excellent. It was so exciting to see him learn how to read and write in Spanish. Also, his communication in Spanish improved so much that he inspired his brothers to want to learn Spanish too. In first grade, he continued learning in Spanish, but he was also introduced to English. I wondered if he would get confused between learning both languages, but he excelled in English as well. Although Miguel's plan to follow his brother's footsteps um, diverted to another path, it was definitely a great life-changing decision. It's amazing to see Miguel grow academically in, two, in the two years that he has been in the DLI program. If he goes on with his with this program into middle school and hopefully high school. I can't imagine all the knowledge he will gain in both languages. Thank you for your time. Rosalind Curtis, Jessica Moralia, and Selena Moralia. Buenas noches, mi no. <laughs> Buenas noches, miembros de board. Mi nombre es Rosalyn Curtis y estoy en primer grado en Scotland. D L A A. Hi. <laughs> Empecé a hablar. Aprender español el año pasado y me encanta. I love, I love being able to speak more than one language. Also, I love the Scotland staff and the program. I want to continue to l learn, learn in Spanish so I can use it my whole entire life. 
Gracias por tu tiempo. Tiempo. Thank you for your time. I'm six years old. Good evening. My name is Jessica Morela, and I am both an employee and mother of two students at Santa Clara Unified. I have a son who is a sophomore at Wilcox and a daughter who is a second grader at Scott Lane. My children are fortunate to have the opportunity to attend Santa Clara Unified Schools through the employee interdistrict process, which I am truly grateful for. As an employee, I have the option of requesting any school in our district. When it was time to roll my daughter for kindergarten, without hesitation, my first choice was Scott Lane because of the dual immersion program. I was thrilled when the district announced this program was being offered to our students. I knew this program would benefit my daughter and provide her with even more opportunities when she's older. She started the program in the 21-22 school year. She only spoke English, but understood some Spanish. We are now in her third year in the program and she's excelling. She's able to read, write, and speak in both English and Spanish. And I'm not shy to admit she does translate for me in the public. With neighboring districts like San Jose Unified, Campbell Union, and Cupertino who have dual immersion programs, I am hopeful that our district will be able to continue this program for our students. This program exemplifies our true core values of commitment to equity, access, and inclusion by bringing together students from diverse backgrounds and cultures to learn a new language. I urge the district to extend the dual immersion program to middle school and eventually high school to continue the amazing work that the Scott Lane staff has started and allow our students to continue on their journey of becoming lifelong learners as bilingual students. Thank you. Hello, my name is Selena Morela. I go to Scott Lane Elementary School and I'm I I'm in second grade in the Spanish program. I love that I am learning how to speak, write, and read in Spanish and English at my school. It helps me speak to my grandparents and I even translate for my mom who did not have this program when she was a little girl. I really hope to continue to learn Spanish all the way until I graduate high school. Please continue our program because my dream is to be a future Spanish teacher one day. Thank you for listening. Hey, Haley Cornette, Xander Villar, and Leonardo Navarrete. Hola, mi nombre es Haley Cornett y yo soy un estudiante en cuarto grado en el programa DLI. Yo he sido en el programa de DLI desde primer grado. Cuando yo entré al programa, yo no sabía mucho español. Ahora yo puedo hablar, leer y escribir en español muy bien. Yo puedo entender personas en mi comunidad mucho más bien y entender mis amigos y familia que no pueden hablar en inglés. Ser bilingüe es muy útil. Va a ayudarme a agarrar trabajos mejores en el futuro y ayudarme a ser un amigo y un miembro de familia más bueno. Soy feliz en ser en el programa DLI y yo espero que yo pueda continuarlo durante el resto de mi escuela. And for those who do not understand Spanish, I have the same thing in English. <laughs> Hello, my name is Haley Cornett, and I am a fourth grade student in the DLI program. I've been in the DLI program since first grade. I entered the DLI program barely knowing any Spanish, and now I can read, speak, and write well in Spanish. I can understand people in my community better, as well as some of my friends and family who don't speak much English. Being bilingual is very useful. It will help me get better jobs in the future and help me be a better friend and family member. I'm happy to be in the DLI program, and I hope I get to continue through the rest of my schooling. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Leonardo, y yo pienso que es bueno hablar dos idiomas, porque puedo tener más oportunidades. Puedo tener y aprender de 
diferentes culturas y hacer muchos más amigos. Uh, good evening, my name is Leonardo, and I think that it's good to speak in two languages because you can have more opportunities, you can understand and learn different cultures and have many more friends. Good evening, Board of Trustees. My name is Laurel Villar, and I teach transitional kindergarten at Scott Lane Elementary School. Not only that, I am also a product of Santa Clara Unified School District. I went to Scott Lane, Bookster, and Santa Clara High. My Spanish journey started in high school. My sons are having an, a, a different opportunity. My oldest son, Noah, is in the pioneer class of the DLI students in fourth grade. And I have my second son here to speak with you tonight. Hi, my name is Xander and I am second grade in Scott Lane. It's important that I learn to read, write, and speak Spanish because it allowed me to communicate with more people. For example, if a new student co comes from a Spanish-speaking country, I could talk with them and teach them English. Also, I am able to read books in English and Spanish and write in both languages so more people could understand. This past summer, my brother and I were able to go visit my dad's family in Peru. I were able to talk with my cousins and tios and tias, my abuela. Also, when I went to the barber shop in Peru, I was able to tell them what haircut I wanted. It felt great to be able to speak and understand people in Peru. We are here tonight to ask that you please support our dual language immersion program from TK to 12th grade so that our students can become fully bilingual and biliterate, graduate, graduating SUSD with a seal of biliteracy. Our children have the potential to do great things in two languages or more, and if they're just given this opportunity. Thank you for your time. Sasha Rosal and Hannah, I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I can't read your last name, but Hannah. Hola, mi nombre es Sasha. Yo empecé mis clases bilingües en primer grado y yo creo que... <laughs> Y yo creo que es importante ser bilingüe porque me ay han ayudado a hablar de español y inglés y así comunicarme con más personas. A mí me a mí me ayudó a poder hablar con mis con mi familia, con mi familia, y no, con mi familia, y no, a ver, que no, familia que no uh, hablaba inglés, y en un futuro, si el programa bilingüe continúa, Yo voy a poder comunicarme mejor, así poder tener un trabajo mejor siendo bilingüe. Gracias. Hola, mi nombre es Hanna y yo quiero ser bilingüe porque aprender los idiomas es importante. Y antes no sabía inglés, pero ya puedo hablar inglés. Y yo entiendo lo que mis maestros me dicen y mis compañeros también. Y me gustaría ayudar a las personas que no saben inglés y también ayudar a mi familia que tampoco sabe inglés. Muchas gracias. Hi, my name is Hannah. I want to be bilingual because uh, practice two languages is important. Uh, 
Before I do not speak English, but now I can speak English. And I understand what my teachers tell me and my friends do. Uh, I would like to help persons do not know English and and help my family too. Thank you. I have I have one more slip from Chris. Chris. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Lepe, and this is my wife, Noreen Kaliva Lepe. And um, my, uh, my wife, Noreen, actually went to Scott Lane when she was uh, a little girl. And uh, back in those days, I mean, she could, she could tell you, but uh, they were trying to stamp out the language uh, from you. You know, it was, it was looked down upon. Um, And I think that's uh, that's sort of a shared experience with, um, sorry, many people of our generation. Um, so this is uh, this is a matter that has to do with uh, you know economic advancement. Knowing more than more than one language is vital in in uh, in today's economy. Uh, it was vi it was vital back then. But today there's an acknowledgement and understanding that two languages, three languages, four languages, the more that you know, the better. Um, but it's more than that question, right? This is a question of identity. This is a question of morality. Um, and so I really hope you, you take everything that you heard today into consideration. And thank you for, for hearing us out. And I know this is a first potential step in, in the process um, of looking into uh, expanding what is something that's really beautiful for our children. So uh, thank you. I don't know if uh, my wife has anything she wants to add. Nothing else to add. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the room that would like to speak on this topic? Come on up. Hello, my name is Jose Aquino. I'm part of the I'm part of the school Scott Lane. I'm also part of student council as their president. And I'm here to tell you that the dual language program should keep going from from elementary school to high school. It's a really great program to help us all communicate from people from all the way from South America to people to North America. This could also help us economically and socially because people could interact with more people. That's all. Thank you. From the bear? I was wondering if the bear would give us a cheer <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> you know the rules of the mascot, they never speak. Is there anyone in the Zoom that would like to speak? Okay. The members of the public attending through the Zoom webinar who would like to speak, please raise your hand using the raise hand tool. Public Zoom uh, public speakers will be called upon in the order that need, that hands were raised. There will be a two minute timer on the uh, that we will tell you is going when it's done um, because it's not currently working on the Zoom screen for you. So we will let you know when your two minutes are up. To ensure everyone has the same amount of speaking time, we will have to move on to the next commenter after two minutes. When your name is called, you will be prompted by Zoom to unmute. Our first commenter is B. Gutierrez. You may begin speaking. All right. 
Hello, uh, my name is Beatriz, I go by B, and I'm Julian's mom. And as you can see, my little man is on his way to being proficient and speaking English and Spanish, which I'm very, very proud of. Um, and I wanted to share a little story of what happened to us um, when we were in COVID, which was his first full year um, doing the, the DLI program. Um, he was in Ms. Garibos class, and he was actually participating in class one of the few times that he would do it because he wasn't feeling comfortable speaking Spanish and he had to spell out a word. And as he was spelling it, he added the letter H in there. And I remember Ms. Garibo letting him know like, hey, Julian, there's no H in this word. And his reasoning was like, it's silent. Nobody's gonna know it's even there. So why does it matter? And she just took her time to really explain it to him so that he could really understand because as much as we speak Spanish at home, we don't stop after every single word to let them know like, hey, this doesn't have an H, this doesn't have an H, or even like where the accents go. So based on everything that he's doing in class and the practice he's getting at home, I am, I mean, you saw him earlier, this is his progress. So I really wanna thank everybody for this opportunity that he's gonna continue getting throughout his lifetime here at Santa Clara Unified and I hope that, you know, this changes more people's minds to actually get into a dual immersion program because speaking it is very different from actually reading it and writing it and being fully proficient in this language. Thank you very much. That was it for me. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Clara Kreiser. You should be able to speak. And I will let you know when your two minutes are up. Thank you. Okay. Um, I hope you can hear me. My name is Clara. Um, our family moved to Santa Clara in 2021. And we, my husband and I, we both work in healthcare in Santa Clara and Santa Clara County. And um, my son, well, first of all, um, I didn't have quite the opportunity that he has now. Um, and I'm still trying to learn Spanish better in my nursing career. So I'm really excited that he has this opportunity and he started a DLI in kindergarten, um, but this is his second year at Scott Lane. And uh, my son has had excellent teachers and quality learning experiences thanks to open enrollment because it's not our neighborhood school. Um, and so we'd look forward to continuing that opportunity through open enrollments and his Spanish sounds better than mine. And he often connects my pronunciation um, and he had no Spanish before kindergarten. So we're really proud of him. And we desire for him to remain in Santa Clara um, so he can, um, at Scott Lane, so he can continue his education at Scott Lane. And we'd be so grateful for him to continue middle school in DLI. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clara. Okay. Um, that was our last commenter. So uh, if the board, has it doesn't have any other questions we good okay oh trustee mirror head so what's the um dr waddell ne next steps on this or would it be when would it be coming back to us with more yeah so i think the next step is um to put together a planning committee with staff and community that will begin to work and explore um some of the things you've heard for next year and then we would expect as that committee has some recommendations to bring them forward to you in the, in a future meeting. Okay. And I just want to thank again all of our students who came to speak tonight to show off your amazing language skills. It's daunting enough to stand up there and speak, let alone be six and seven and eight years old, but then to speak in a second language is incredibly impressive. So Thank you so much for coming and speaking tonight. We appreciate it very much. Okay, um, we'll now move on to action items I-1, uh, the 2024 Budget Advisory Committee. Do we have um, a presentation or information or Mr. Schill, do you have anything to say? Good evening. Um, at the last board meeting, I shared some information about uh, creating a new budget advisory committee. And 
Um, since that time, we have uh, brought that back to the board. Um, we have added some additional language to the agenda item for the board's consideration. And also, um, President Fairchild has made a recommendation um, in the agenda uh, indicating her recommendation that the board members to serve on the committee would be Trustee Rotterman and Trustee Ryan with uh, Trustee Muirhead being identified as the alternate. Um, in regards to the additional added language um, for, um, I stated in there what the purpose of the meeting it was and also stated that the meetings will include information education, um, a review of budget processes, and analysis of programmatic revenues and expenditures, information regarding various factors impacting the budget, and what was added was, as well as discussions about the priorities and values to be considered in the budgeting process. Uh, in addition to that, there were some comments that we had received um, about other individuals that may be considered to be a part of the Budget Advisory Committee as well, and some suggestions that came in were um, possibly the student trustee, uh, PTA council president, DLAC representative, and the Santa Clara Schools Foundation representative. Uh, so those might be identified uh, in the future. Um, but tonight, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to identify um, who the board member uh, uh, appointments will be to this committee. And again, President Fairchild's recommendations are Trustee Rotterman, Trustee Ryan, and um, Trustee Muirhead as the alternate. Thank you, Mr. Schill. Um, do, do any of our trustees have any questions um, about this? Um, I had a clarifying question. Um, uh, I, the addition of priorities and values, um, is that going to be the only opportunity that the board will have to provide input? Because there will only be two trustees on the committee, and I'm sure there are trustees not on the committee that would like to have input on that. So is there are there plans for budget study sessions or other areas where trustees can have input? Absolutely, and I know um, Superintendent Waddell has been in conversation with the board president about possibly adding uh, future budget study sessions to have those conversations as well, or those opportunities. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so um, if there are no questions, then we um, will move to um, approve this. Can I get a motion and a second, please? I'll second. Okay. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? She's still here. I do see her there. Now it says talking for another thing. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Student Trustee Valdez. Yes. And I vote yes. So that passes seven to zero. Okay. Item I2, second reading board policy updates recommended from the board meeting on March 14th, 2024. Are there any trustee comments or questions? Okay. Second. Do we have a second? Second, Rotterman. Okay. Trustee Rotterman. Yes. Trustee uh, Gonzalez? Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes, so that passes seven to zero with Trustee Valdez voting yes. The second, uh, I three, second reading board bylaw update recommended from the board meeting on March 14th, 2024. I get a motion and a second. Motion to approve, Rotterman. Okay. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Uh, action item J1, resolution 2407, affirming April 23rd, 2024 as school bus driver day. Second, Second Ryan. Ryan. OK. 
Okay, we have a second from Trustee Gonzalez, a, a, a motion by Trustee Gonzalez and a second by Trustee Ryan. Trustee, uh, Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero with student Trustee Valdez voting yes. Trustee Lieberman, just so people in the public, if they have an old copy of this, uh, it has been updated. Of the resolution? Yeah. Okay. Uh, J2, Resolution 2417, affirming April as Public Schools Month. Move to approve, Ryan. Okay. Trustee Rotterman? Trustee Gonzalez? Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes 7 to 0 with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. J3, Resolution 2418, affirming April as School Library Month. Move to approve um, as the granddaughter of a school librarian. Move to approve. <laughs> okay. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Gonzalez? Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Uh, J4, Resolution 2419, affirming April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Move to approve, Marion. Okay. Uh, Trustee Rotterman is absent. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Fairchild. Yes. Student Trustee Valdez. Yes. And I vote yes. That passes six to zero with Trustee Rotterman absent and student Trustee Valdez voting yes. J5 Resolution 2420 affirming <clears throat> April as National Volunteer Month. Move to approve, approve. Ryan. Second, Muirhead. Okay. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee uh, Canova. Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Tr uh, student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes six to zero with uh, Trustee Rotterman absent and my oh. <laughs> uh, affirming April as National Volunteer Month. Yes. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Okay. So that passes seven to zero with student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Okay, we're now down to action items for human resources. K-1, the 2023-2024 tentative agreement between the Santa Clara Unified School District and United Teachers of Santa Clara, AB 1200 UTSC financial disclosure and 2023-2024 certificated salary structures, schedules, I'm sorry. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Gonzalez and a second from Trustee Rotterman. Trustee Rotterman. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Fairchild. Yes. Student Trustee Valdez. Oh, wait, you don't vote on that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm in a groove. Sorry. Um, I vote yes. So that passes seven to zero. Um, K2 2023-2024 certificated and classified management salary schedules and increase to employer contribution for health and welfare benefits with AB 1200 financial disclosure. Motion to approve. Rotterman. Okay, we have a motion for Trustee Rotterman, a second from Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Rotterman. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Fairchild. Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero. K3, revised classified hourly unrepresented salary schedule, effective January 1st, 2024. Motion to approve, Rotterman. We have a motion from Trustee Rotterman, a second from Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. And I vote yes, that passes seven to zero. K4, revised job description, coordinator of arts and instructional resources. Um, 
Dr. Gonzalez, do you have anything you'd like to say here? Move to approve. Second, Rotterman. <laughs> I don't have much to say. You can see the changes uh, in the job descriptions. They're in red and underlined um, in case you print and can see the color. Um, but no, um, uh, as you know, we have uh, an initiative with the arts program. And so this is a great opportunity to have uh, um, this this component into the instructional resources coordinator position. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, if there are no questions, we'll vote. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. And I vote yes, that passes seven to zero. Action item L1, resolution 2403, authorizing change order number one, to the contract with AAA Fence Company Incorporated for additional work for the tennis courts and concession building at Wilcox High School. Vice President Lieberman, could we possibly take care of one, two, three, and four in a single vote? Can, can we do that? Can we do that? The resolution. I believe we can on a resolution. You still have the same voting. It's up. If not, we'll go through the long process. I'm just trying to speed things up a little. Second. On the first. I so one. move, and he seconded. Okay. Sorry. What's the motion? Is the motion just on L1 or the first four? The first four. Okay. First. So it would be it would be L1, 2, 3, and 4. They're all change order. Okay. If there, if no one thinks that's a problem, we'll just do that. Yes? Okay. So um, a motion by Trustee Rotterman, a second by Trustee Gonzalez to approve L1, L2, L3, and L4. Yes. Trustee Rotterman. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Fairchild. Yes. Student Trustee Valdez. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I vote yes. That passes seven to zero with tr student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Um, L5, Resolution 2415, Resolution of the Board of Education of Santa Clara Unified School District, declaring membership as a limited purpose member in the Schools Alliance for Workers' Compensation Excess Self-Funded Joint Powers Authority for a lost portfolio transfer of the district's self-retention in the self-insured workers' compensation claims in the years July 1, 1992 to June 30th, 2016. Motion to approve. Second. Gonzalez. It's tempted to ask him to rephrase it in English, but that's good. <laughs> okay, we have a, a, a motion from Trustee Rotterman, a second from Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Wow. Question. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Could you translate that in English? <laughs> I'd like to see thank Trustee you. Lieberman do that. <laughs> no, thank you. For, for the public that's, you know. Yes. Thank so you. from 2000, from 19, from July 1st, 1992 through June 30th, 2016, um, Santa Clara Unified was self-insured uh, for its workers' compensation program. And as the result of that, um, we have, um, and then after that, we transitioned to a JPA. As a result of being, even though we are no longer self-insured, we have still self-insured claims during that period of time, both open and closed, that the district still has a liability for. Um, and I want to thank our safety manager, uh, uh, Samitha Cutshaw, who did the lion's share of the work on this. But through this process, um, we've been able to identify uh, an opportunity to transfer, or it's called a lost portfolio transfer, enter into a lost transfer, uh, lost property transfer with Swiss Re through this JPA that is named on here um, to transfer that liability to Swiss Re, and then they will manage those claims. The reason to do that is one, it mitigates um, our future loss exposure. Uh, two, it also protects our general fund from uh, additional cost reserves above and beyond uh, this. And three, it frees up those resources for other light expenditures within the district um, of which we do have some uh, opportunities and exposure within the district. And so that frees up the res uh, uh, resources for those, those financial resources 
thereby allowing those financial resources to be used for that, and then also a further limit the exposure to our district general fund. So this is a true win-win, and it also allows for those employees during this time period to still get their workers' compensation claims administered. But we, we don't know what our risk is from those. It's, it's sort of a potential risk. Well, according to our last actuarial report, it was in excess of $8 million was our current exposure. Um, if it, it, ter, current potential, yes. And, and what is it costing us to ensure that? Um, at the last report, about $1.3 million um, would be our transfer process. And again, that's being transferred out of using those resources um, that are set aside for the workers' compensation claims. And that's just one time we don't have ongoing uh, expenses to do this transfer. If we do have any costs that come through after the fact, it's it because um, it ends up in a certain layer where we will also re be receiving a reimbursement for that. So you're correct. Our exposure is very minimal out, uh, going forward. I will also say we have a representative here with us um, that is on uh, the line. Uh, his name is Kyle McKibben. Uh, he is uh, uh, available also to answer any of those questions that you may have of him. Good. Thank you. Okay, um, if there are no other questions, we can go ahead and do a vote. Okay, Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Uh, student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes, that passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez voting yes. Um, L6, Resolution 2421, authorizing partnership with ABAG Power for natural gas services and the contract with a ABAG, publicly owned energy resources for natural gas services. Move to approve. Second, Rotterman. We have a motion to approve from Trustee Gonzalez and a second from Trustee Rotterman. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Uh, yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Uh, tr student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez voting yes. L7, use of facilities group 1.5 organizations for the period of June 1st, 2024 through May 31st, 2025. Move to approve. Second, Rotterman. I have a question. Trustee Muirhead. Um, Michelle, I think I'm directing this question to you or maybe to Mr. Scheel. Um, I noticed on the list of those groups, there were two scouting organizations. But my understanding is we have a lot of scouting organizations. So are, are were all of them asked and the other ones didn't respond? Or, or do we, yeah, it's just these two that have responded and we're going to get the others in bits and pieces? Or what's going on with the rest of them? Do they know? So we emailed everyone who has been a renter in the current group 1.5 within the past 24 months and let them know about this. Um, we see less and less scouts renting our facilities. So to our knowledge, these are actually the two groups that do rent them on a fairly regular basis. Um, and we weren't able, there weren't any others that have rented in the past 12 months. Okay, good to know. Thank you. I Trustee didn't. Rotterman? Yeah, thank you. You know, a while back when we were looking at this, I noticed that we had some scout units that were in groups three and four. This goes back a ways. Have those units been since moved to 1.5? Are they just no longer using? Uh, there were a couple of, you provided a list to me a while back, and I was shocked to see them not in 1.5 or two. There were some threes and fours. Uh, so they would only be four if they had adults classes but they would have been in three if they didn't have that correct ratio um but i don't think that we have once again we haven't really had many scouting entities come to us but we'll certainly reach out to them again so at this point if there's other entities out there that wish to be 1.5 they still have opportunity to get added to the list correct yeah so the way we wrote it was that um you can basically we're going to do it once a year but if there's anyone who wants to apply to get in, we'll bring it to the board, but it's not retroactive to June 1st. It would, your group 1.5 would start whenever the board approved it. 
So it'd be for any reservations moving forward for the end of that. And they Here would be through. aware of the fees because they'd go through Facilitron. They would say the fees, and they would go and apply for one five, get a reduction in fee, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all I want to know. Can can I ask a follow on? Go ahead. Do you know why it is that we have less scouting organizations? It seemed like we used. I mean, they used to meet after school at all sorts of schools. Is there? Is it a fees issue? Is it that they're finding churches or something or? Um, the one conversation that I had with a, a Girl Scout troop was that they just couldn't find anyone to lead it anymore. So it's actually a decrease in just scouting numbers in general, that they're having problems finding leaders. And so that was the one discussion that I had with one of the Girl Scout troops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm... I can, oh, I can add something just from my own experience. I mean, my child's Girl Scout troop meets now at and I think that's it's a transition from COVID, right? They started meeting at a house, mm -hmm. uh, the leader's yeah. house, yeah. and that seems to work really well for them. And so um, that may be part of they, some of them may be doing things like that. So to further address it, I'm actually on the executive board for Silicon Valley Monterey Bay Council, uh, Boy Scouts, and they find it very difficult to get access to and to work with the school district. For a variety of reasons, it's not just facility rentals; it's recruitment, it's other things, um, and so that's a larger discussion. Also, most of those units are running on a a shoestring budget, and so a little bit of fee is enough to knock them completely out. All of them have what they call charter organizations. So these are organizations like Elks or Lions or Rotary or somebody like that that charters the group, and often those groups are providing facilities or other alternatives to to those units. So that's a little bit of additional input for your question. So they're finding other places, basically. Finding other places. Also, the number of units in Santa Clara, in particular, has dropped significantly. We've got a lot less less uh, representation in the city. Thank you very much, Trustee Redmond. Thank you, Michelle, for clarifying. OK, so we have a motion from Trustee Gonzalez and a second from Trustee Rotterman. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Uh, student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Okay, so M1 is a consideration of the waiver of administrative hearing. And I have something I need to read. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the recommendation of staff and for approval of the waiver of administrative hearing regarding student 032824A.1? Recommendation is for the expulsion with a suspended enforcement through March 28th, 2025, with a change of placement from Wilcox High School to, Fre to Fremont Union High School District on an inter-district transfer agreement for student 032824A.1. And that student 032824A.1 can apply for reinstatement at the end of the expulsion term, March 28th, 2025. Before anybody says anything, I think this was changed, right? Not to, not to Fremont Union High School District, but um, it was changed to Wilson, right? That's correct. Um, That's so approved. Second, Rotterman, okay. with the change. Okay. Um, Okay, so that was Trustee Gonzalez and Trustee Rotterman. Okay. Bear with me just a second. Okay. Motion by Board Member Gonzalez and a second by Board Member Rotterman, and we'll do a roll call vote. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Wait. Oh. Trustee, uh, uh, yes. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes. So that passes seven to zero. Okay. We're now down to 01 items from the board. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. So a lot of a lot of things have gone on. I'm not going to mention most, but I will mention a couple. I want to thank uh, Alyssa, um, Alyssa Meltzer uh, for arranging a uh, uh, a board visit to Bookser along with Principal Ponzio. Um, uh, it was always nice to see see the schools in a relaxed environment. 
Um, and they had a lot of impressive things. They even, they even mentioned that DLI thing. Um, also, today we had, uh, in my, my Santa Clara Rotary, I like to share this, particularly when it, we have things with students. We had four students from the school district, uh, one of which gave part of the presentation. Her name is uh, Dana Renisvo, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing. She's a MEX student junior, and she gave part of the presentation, and they go to what's called Enterprise Leadership Conference, and it's a three-day event where they're learning how to create and start a business. At the end of it, they uh, compete for uh, rank with uh, a group of venture capitalists. Um, she actually is planning a business uh, based off of that, and so it was very, uh, very. It was great to see her and hear her. She's an extremely articulate and uh, somebody that makes us very, very proud to ha have her as one of our um, Santa Clara students. So thank Viola Smith, the principal, as well as uh, Greg Shelby, the principal, for supporting those students in that program. Um, and with that, I think. We do have a couple of future uh, Santa Clara students that are going to be speaking, one of which is on the board. Uh, he will be talking in a few weeks. I, I, don't, I actually don't remember the date. What's the date, Lewis? April 11th. Okay. So he'll be speaking then. And then we have some students that uh, the robotics team will be coming, bringing their, their robot and showing that. And the reason I mentioned it, these are a lot of the civic and business leaders in the community. So they're seeing what Santa Clara can do on the ground in the real, in the real world and uh, that translates to support for the schools, which I think is really important. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to mention that next uh, meeting, I will be joining you remotely. You know, I got to get the uh, the um, address to uh, to our staff and to our um, president. I'll be at CSBA's uh, Coast to Coast, so I'll be in DC. To, and she's staying that night, so I'm not traveling. I was going to be traveling that day, but it works out where I can stay an extra day and and take it take the meeting remotely. Um, I just want to mention that this year, in uh, the first week of December, the AEC, the Annual Education Conference, is going to be in Anaheim. So we'll get to uh, enjoy the um, the happiest place on earth as our president's enjoying today. So just wanted to mention that if you can make it, Trustee Ryan. Um, just wanted to briefly mention I had to leave the meeting briefly uh, uh, today because the um, Del Dolores Huerta had their their drama club, um, had their only performance um, of Alice in Wonderland. It was a very quick trip through Wonderland, uh, but I was happy I was able to go up there and see it. They were able to use the, um, the theater at McDonald High School. It was beautiful. Um, the... Uh, it was great. To, I, I never got to use microphones as a as a performer, even in high school. So it was great to kind of see that in, in work. And um, and it was a student directed performance, too. So that was really impressive to see. And um, they had a great time doing it. And um, I was glad I was able to step away for just a few minutes to to go and see that. So thank you. Trustee Canova. Wow, the students tonight were fantastic. All those deliveries, my gosh, you know, and I, I'm sure some of you caught it up here. Some, some of the eye contact was incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, just at the perfect timing, it was just so wonderful. And uh, and there was that one speaker, he, he was so good. At the very end, he had that very, very lengthy, lengthy pause. And then that's it. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really, it was great. I enjoyed it. Student trustee Valdez. Yeah, thank you. So early this week, I got to meet with my student senate as we discussed a little bit about our efforts at vaping and mental health. And we have come up with great ideas, which one of them is to try and push out an initiative where we work with all the schools to try and push out a specific club dedicated to mental health and vaping. So as we continue those efforts and work with Dr. Waddell on that, we hope to make a lot of progress. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Trustee Muirhead. Thank you. So I um, participated in the district advisory committee meeting. Um, we're making progress on the LCAP. Uh, that's great. And the environmental literacy and sustainability committee, we're making um, a little progress. Uh, I'm working on the, the um, group that's trying to improve our waste going out and finding how difficult it is when we have three different haulers and three different recycling methods from the three different cities and, and how some of them are much further along in this process than other cities. Um, so I won't embarrass any cities, but um, they should be embarrassed that they are not doing more. Um, and then I was uh, at 
a town hall that our Congressman Rokana did. Um, he, he did a couple in a weekend, but one of them he did was just focused on anti-Semitism in our community. And he invited the Jewish and Israeli American communities to come um, tell him about what's happening, hear what he's doing. And, and we had a couple of our Wilcox students who showed up and gave really passionate um, descriptions of what they've been experiencing and the congressman is following up with the district so that we can um, we can work together to help improve the situation. Thank you. Trustee Fairchild. Hi, greetings from Disneyland. I'm here with the Cabrillo Orchestra and Band, and today they actually had a fabulous recording session, and so we're excited for their performance tomorrow. Um, I did want to say I am looking forward to going to the speech this week at Wilcox. I also have been able to have some very good talks with our Muslim communities, and I think it's really important to bring the communities together and to recognize that there is pain on both sides right now and to, and there, unfortunately, we are having bullying on both sides. And so we need to make sure that we are um, reaching out and bridging those gaps between those communities. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, Roberta Jones Junior Theater's um, SpongeBob production. They have two more performances, Friday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 2 p.m. If you haven't seen it, it's a lot of fun. And that's all. Thanks. Okay. And I don't have anything to report, so I'm not going to talk. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Rotterman. Okay. Um, Trustee Rotterman. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Canova? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Fairchild? Yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. And I vote yes. So we are adjourned at 836.